It's taken a few months, but it's finally time to dive into the partner models for AMD's latest card, the RX 7900 GRE. We've already covered the performance of the Sapphire Pulse, and you can watch that video by clicking on the card here in the corner. But for those of you who are still on the fence, let's look at each card individually and then dive into the performance numbers. And our first card in the lineup is the ASUS RX 7900 GRE Tough OC. It sports a triple fan, triple slot design and is 32 centimeters long. It does offer a BIOS for quiet and performance mode. And like all of these cards, draws its power from two 8-pin connectors and allows for 340 watts while overclocking. Next on our list is the ASRock RX 7900 GRE Steel Legend. This is also a triple slot, triple fan design, but is a bit smaller than the ASUS and is only 30.5 centimeters in length. Despite this, it gets an extra 5 watts while overclocking, capping at 345. Next up is the Power Color GRE Hellhound. This card is also a triple slot, triple fan design, though the middle fan is a bit smaller and is a bit thinner than most of these cards, so something to consider if you don't have a full three slots available. The card is 32 centimeters in length. It does offer a performance and quiet BIOS, as well as allowing up to 340 watts while overclocking. And now we come to the Sapphire cards. And starting with the Pulse, which we covered in a previous video, it's also a triple slot, triple fan design and is 32 centimeters long. One thing to note is that it is the lightest card out of this bunch, being just over 1.1 kilograms but it also has the lowest maximum power limit at 311 watts. The Sapphire GRE Pure is the next step up, sporting a white design with triple fans, triple slot cooling at 32 centimeters long. It is a few grams heavier than the Sapphire Pulse, but also has a dedicated switch to disable its LED lighting and its power limit is only marginally higher at 320 watts. If you are looking for the top of the line Sapphire, that would be the GRE Nitro Plus. This is the only card in the lineup to actually require three physical slots. It still has the same three fan design, though the overall design language is decidedly more premium. It's the same 32 centimeters long, though a decidedly much heavier 1.6 kilos in weight, while offering premium features like dual BIOS, and an ARGB output that lets you sync your card's RGB with the rest of your system. It also has the highest max power limit at 351 watts. All these cards will be using the same test system, an Intel Core i9-14900K on an EVGA Z790 Dark with 32GB of DDR5-7200 memory, Windows 11 Professional with the Service Pack 23H2 installed, and the latest press driver from AMD. Moving over into the performance benchmarks and starting off at 4K, we can see that the 7900 GRE fits in nicely between the RTX 4070 Ti and the RTX 4070 Super. The slowest card and also our baseline, the Sapphire RX 7900 GRE Pulse being at 100% and the fastest card being the Sapphire GRE Nitro Plus being 3% faster. That's really not a whole lot of difference and nothing you could probably even tell while gaming. With the next model up, the RX 7900 XT being a relatively massive 19% faster than stock. Still, it is a pretty good showing overall for the 7900 GRE, though when gaming at 4K, it can't quite hold 60 FPS at all times, averaging just over 56 FPS on the GRE Pulse, with the difference between the fastest and the slowest card being only 2%, or about one FPS. Dropping down to 1440p doesn't change these charts all that much, with the Sapphire Pulse still being a little bit faster than the RTX 4070 Super, and the Sapphire GRE Nitro Plus being a little bit slower than the RTX 4070 Ti. All these cards did make up a little bit of performance compared to the RX 7900 XT, which is now 17% faster than stock, but really not that much. Enabling ray tracing on these cards doesn't do them that big of a favor, with the RX 7900 XT now being 16% faster than stock, but it does have them lag further behind their NVIDIA counterparts, which are now 25 and 36% faster respectively. 
Moving down to a more standard 1080p does bring all these cards more closely in line, with the Sapphire Pulse now being virtually tied with the 4070 Super, and the 4070 Ti being just a smidge faster than the GRE Nitro Plus. CPU bottlenecks also help bring down the RX 7900 XT, which is now only 13% faster than stock, though it still clearly is in a different performance bracket. Still, we are talking about a good amount of performance, since even the slowest card, the Sapphire Pulse, averages 157 FPS while gaming. Power consumption is one of the ways that cards tend to differentiate themselves, and the 7900 GRE is no different. The Sapphire GRE Pulse comes in at 265 watts, which is only 15 watts more than the RX 7800 XT, but that is almost 50 watts more than the RTX 4070 Super. Moving down the chart, the Sapphire Pure comes in at 271 watts, which is right in line with the RTX 4070 Ti. So not a great showing, but it's not too different. The Asus GRE Tough, Power Color GRE Hellhound, and the ASRock Steel Legend come in at 288, 289, and 290 watts respectively. That just leaves the Sapphire GRE Nitro Plus at 296 watts, which at least is a bit better than the RX 7900 XT at 312 watts. Overall, this chart shouldn't be that surprising. Faster cards tend to use more power after all, but that does change a bit when we V-Sync at 60 Hertz. Suddenly, the ASRock Steel Legend is the most efficient at 94 watts, followed by the Sapphire Pure, Pulse, and the Nitro Plus. The two relative outliers are the PowerColor GRE Hellhound at 121 watts and the ASUS GRE Tough at 127. Both of these cards do have a slightly higher clock speed while gaming compared to the other cards, especially the Pulse, so there's probably some loss in efficiency trying to hit those higher targets. Thankfully, both these cards, and really all these cards, have pretty decent coolers on them, with the quietest being the Power Color GRE Hellhound, coming in at only 25 decibels while gaming, and the loudest being the ASRock GRE Steel Legend at 31.1. And when we normalize everything to isolate cooler performance, we can see the Power Color GRE Hellhound does have the best cooler out of this bunch, but really there are no standout poor performances here, and it's good to see that the smaller overall length on the ASRock Steel Legend hasn't really affected its cooling performance. Briefly taking a look at overclocking performance, please note these numbers have changed a bit since our original Sapphire GRE Pulse review, since AMD did open up their driver a bit to allow for more overclocking performance in the memory. And in our new testing, all the cards were able to hit the respective power limits, allowing for roughly 15% more performance over stock while overclocked. The reason this GRE edition of the 7900 exists at all is to do with price. It was designed to go head to head with the RTX 4070 Super, and by and large, it does. Even the highest price RX 7900 GRE, namely the ASUS Tough, is a better value when gaming at 4K than the RTX 4070 Super. The Sapphire GRE Nitro Plus, at the same price, is a bit faster and includes a few more features, so ends up being a slightly better value. Moving up the chart, we have the Power Color GRE Hellhound at $580, which has a really good cooler. The ASRock GRE Steel Legend at $570, and could be interesting for people looking for a shorter card. Followed by the Sapphire GRE Pure at the same $570, and the Sapphire GRE Pulse at the reference $550, being the most cost effective. It competes very well with the RX 7800 XT at $500, so you are spending $50 more, but you are getting $50 more worth of performance. And really, at the MSRP price point, there isn't a whole lot of competition from NVIDIA, at least if you're okay sacrificing ray tracing performance, as well as the DLSS suite. Anyone considering the RX 7800 XT should at least consider the RX 7900 GRE, assuming you can find one around MSRP. And if you are looking for even more performance, you should probably consider the RX 7900 XT, which sometimes can be found for even less than $700. Not a bad price considering it offers more RAM and better performance. But if you can resist the siren call of the RTX 4070 Super and its features, the RX 7900 GRE is a good option.